In the last two videos, I made a router sled for face routing workpieces without using a planer. In this first of three episodes, I'm going to create the jigs and fixtures I use to turn my table saw into one of the most utilized tools in my workshop. Hi and welcome to episode 9 of this Luthier's Workshop build series. Table saws are great for when you want to cut accurate, repeatable, straight or angled cuts with the grain in long boards. That's called ripping. But when you want to make cross cuts, angled cuts or rip very thin strips, you can run into safety problems. In the next three episodes, I'm going to help you with those as well as use the table saw to make finger joints, mortises and tenons, and to set up a jig to turn your table saw into a jointer for if you're on a budget. Before we do any of that though, the most important thing is to ensure your blade is parallel to the mitre slots and that your fence is parallel to both. You can buy tools to help you, but the good ones cost hundreds of dollars. If you buy a dial indicator for less than $10 and use some offcuts of wood, you can make one of these. First, unplug your saw. I pick a tooth on the right of my blade and put the dial indicator on it. Then I mark it with a sharpie. Push the tool hard against the mitre slot and set it to zero. Then I roll the blade to the left and move the tool with it and check the other side. I set mine up already so my blade is sitting where I want it. Everything's straight so we can start making stuff. A few of the things I'm going to make will need runners for the mitre slots. I like to use chopping boards from the dollar store. They're self lubricating, tough and don't flex in different humidity like wood does. Before cutting the plastic though, I set the width on my saw using off cuts of MDF. When I'm happy with that, I cut the plastic. The CNC files and plan for this push stick is free down in the description. This plastic melts at table saw speed, so I do a little analog sanding on the linisher to clean off the burrs. The runner fits into the slot, slides well and doesn't have any lateral shake. Time to make a router sled. My design is inspired by a YouTuber called I've been thinking workshop. I liked some of his ideas and didn't like others. So this is my version that suits what I do. I've included a free plan down in the description along with some other goodies. So feel free to check them out. I designed it really big because I like to cut big stuff and because when I'm using it, it acts as a cover for my saw table. To start it off, I cut the outlines on the table saw, then switch to a jigsaw to join the curves. For this next bit, you should raise your blade up into the workpiece, which should be weighted down. What I'm doing is I'm cutting the curve by using my fence, which I know is aligned properly. I'm not cutting from the ends because of the design of this sled. I've bought a piece of T-Track for this. It's made from aluminium, which is how fancy people say it. My fence is made from two pieces of pine, which I'm joining together in a V to help keep them both straight. The track helps with this also. Here I'm drilling the mounting holes. Once they're all done, I line up the track so it's set back from the face of my fence. I don't want the track to interfere with whatever I'm cutting. I use my awl to stab a location point in the wood underneath. Then I can remove the track and drill the hole. It looks like I'm going in at some crazy angle, but it's just the camera perspective. I'm really good at woodwork. You can ask anybody. Then I countersink for the head of the mounting screw and that's how you install a screw. Thanks for coming. I've had a lot of comments on my Instagram from people saying they find my videos really relaxing and some of them fall asleep to them. 
I think that's great. Just make sure you unplug whatever machine you're working on first. After all that, I test my clearance with an accessory I bought for this build. Now I fold the fence forward onto the sled and run a glue line along its length. Jeez, this sled is wide. Still going. All right. Then I throw some salt on it. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know why. I place the base of the fence down onto the glue line. Then I teleport to the left of the screen and prepare my cheap corner clamps that cost maybe $5 each and I use them all the time. The deal here is get one end in the clamp and that will hold everything together for when you do the other side. When it's all clamped in, I shoot some nails along its length and leave it for 45 minutes. Once it's out of the clamps, I set the fence with an accurate square, clamp the bottom of the fence base to the sled, and shoot a nail in one side, then screw a temporary screw into the other end. I made these curves on the bandsaw to match the curve on the operator side of the sled. I glue them together and make a big pancake out of them, and that's the blade guard. I thought about writing hello to my Canadian friends, the Ericsson family, in glue, but I didn't have enough room, so unfortunately now they'll never know that I was thinking fond thoughts about them. So now we just build up those layers of delicious pancake wood. So you're probably noticing my hands wobbling and my face is pretty bruised. I filmed this about a week after getting out of hospital. I'd had a pretty bad run of health and my heart stopped while I was in the emergency room. I probably shouldn't have been trying to make things just yet as I'm still pretty weak. There's a little behind the scenes content for you. Okay, next up, I run some painter's tape on either side of the mitre slot and drop some washers in the slot. You can use coins if you're rich. The runners should protrude above the table surface just a little bit, but not too much. I'm using two little runners, but you might like to use one big one. There's no need to use a runner for each mitre slot. People who say that are overcompensating and should be shunned publicly. While I'm dropping the sled on the runners, I'm making sure that the sled is pushed up against my fence for correct alignment. I put the glue caddy from episode 4 on it to stop it from floating away while the glue sets. Then, when the glue is set, I put the caddy away and I cut the fence slot. You only need for half of the blade to enter the fence. I found this $2 rolling pin at the supermarket, divided it in half, and decided to make it into two handles. First, I cut in the two halves on the bandsaw. There they go. Then I cut a wedge out of them. I 
do a test fit now that it's way too late. Then I apply glue in the wedge and on his little bottom. That's a bit too much glue by the way. I use the leftover glue on my fingers to glue up the other handle. Now they're all glued up, I can clamp them in. Once the clamps are on, they need to dry for about 45 minutes. Next, I drill and countersink a hole, all with the same bit. Then I screw it in, Then I repeat for the top screw. Using my mitre slot as a guide, I pencil a line across the sled. We've jumped forward in time now to the part where I'm screwing the screws into the runners after drilling and countersinking the holes. William Ng has a great video about the five cut method for calibrating table saw sleds. I've linked to it in the description below. I cut my first end, then my first side, second end, this is the second side, then the first end again. This means any error will be compounded over those five cuts. The calipers tell me I'm square, so here is where you'd attach your fence permanently. If it's not square, do your calculations again until you get it right, then attach your fence. Just to check, this engineer's square is very precise. I hold the board in the square up against a bright light to see if any light comes through. It doesn't, we've got ourselves a crosscut sled. I'd just like to thank this week's sponsor, me. I paid for it. If you like these videos and want to help out, as well as win guitars or merch, my Patreon link is in the description, as is my merch link, my Instagram, and the free downloads for this episode. I'd like to thank you for joining me for this episode. I hope you had fun. But we're not done yet. In the next episode, we're making a jointing sled for trimming off live edges and prepping board edges for joining together. I hope to see you then.